Hey, what's up? I'm Ines Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create those creepy blue eyes from the White Walkers in Game of Thrones. prepared a video file right here which you can download with link in the description this is what we are going to use to replace my eye as a white walker so um, go ahead link will be in the description download this footage if you want to follow along with this tutorial also if you aren't subscribed already be sure to subscribe to my channel because it's really awesome I make I make pretty cool stuff so definitely hit that subscribe button and also check that bell icon next to it so you get notified when I upload new stuff. So I will drag my original footage into a new composition right here by just dragging it on top of this icon and here we have our video footage. So I will change my screen resolution to full and there we have it. Go to the end of uh, my timeline just right here with the time scrubber and first of all we want to actually track down our eyes. So I'm only going to be doing one eye for this tutorial as it's basically the same thing for both eyes. Um, you just start over with this procedure. So I will click on my video footage and click on track motion right here in the tracker. If you don't see that go to window tracker right here and just click on track motion. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to drag this icon right here on top of my pupil right here and you can make it a little bit bigger if you want to just in case and there we have it. Once you've done that we can click on track backwards because we are actually at the end of our timeline so we have to track it backwards. Alright so right here we had a small mistake so what I'll do is just go back until we are sure that there is no mistake like right here and then I'm just going to hit this icon a few times this is going to calculate it a little bit better and once you think it's fine we can track backwards again and just keep an eye on it pun intended almost done and there we have it so this is the entire track uh, it did a good job and we're going to create a new null object right here and just rename this to pupil uh, one and then we're going to edit the target of the tracker and just make sure that the null object is selected click ok go to the beginning of your timeline and just click apply and just click ok so there we have it, we have this null object tracked to my eye. Okay, so once you've done that, create a new composition. And this is actually going to be our eye comp uh, itself. So we're going to click OK, there we have it. It's just checking the resolution, so it's actually full HD. Uh, it should be like, um, let's go for a square, so 1080 by 1080 and click OK. And there we have it. Create a new solid layer and we're going to rename this Turbulent noise there we go click OK and search for the effect and preset uh, well in the effects and presets search for fractal uh, turbulent noise there we have it we're going to apply this to our solid layer there we have it okay so I'm going to change my fractal type to a dynamic I'm going to change my complexity to 12 and I'm also going to increase my contrast to something like 150 open up the transform settings right here we actually want to check off the uniform scaling I'm going to change my width a little bit lower and my height like 350 something like this should do fine and then we're going to apply an effect uh, channel invert and there we have it to invert this effect looks a little bit better and then we're going to uh, search for polar coordinates and there we have it and paste well also drag this on top of your uh, solid layer and change the rect to polar right here so type of conversion rect to polar and then just change it to 100 percent so now we have like our iris right here and we can still play a little bit with the width right here if we want a little bit more detail i think this looks pretty nice we do have a seam right here but this is going to get like fixed along the way so um maybe like 25. okay so this looks pretty neat I'm going to duplicate uh, the solid layer, so edit duplicate while the solid layer is selected and right here we can actually uh, maybe press S on the keyboard and maybe scale it down a little bit if you want to and then we're going to search for like the circle effect which is under generate and uh, we're going to apply this on the bottom right here. Increase radius something like so, well actually a little bit smaller, there we have it 
and we're going to um, blending mode use the stencil alpha right here that's actually going to um, yeah just show whatever the circle radius is right here we can open up the feather also and just feather it out a little bit and what that will do is just add a little bit more detail in the center I'm also going to scale it back up a little bit because I think it's a little bit too low there we go looks pretty cool uh, so you can build up um, this way you can build up your eye so um, I'm just showing you a few techniques so you can start doing your own thing. I'm going to click on the solid layer again and go to edit duplicate again. And right now I'm going to change my fractal type to a string. Uh, so that will be right here. And I'm going to delete the invert. And I'm also going to increase, well, the scale back to 100. Okay, and we can press T on the keyboard and just change the opacity to something like 20. So now we barely see these strings. Um, I'm going to solo it for now and I'm going to play a little bit more with the contrast right here and also with the transform. So for the transform, the width can be a lot smaller, something like 10. And for the height, a little bit less, something like this, adding a little bit of detail in there like so. We can also press R on the keyboard and just rotate everything a little bit uh, so we have a little bit of an offset for uh, later on we want to fix that seam. So uh, maybe you want to like duplicate this one as well and just rotate it a little bit and then uh, press T on the keyboard and just lower the opacity like to 50. Okay cool. We're going to duplicate the top layer again so edit uh, duplicate and now we're going to change the strings to a basic uh, just a regular basic we're going to solo this again and just open up the transform settings again and increase the height maybe change it to like five press T on the keyboard and just recite um, well just put it back to 100 opacity so something like this looks pretty cool uh, maybe we want to increase the contrast and decrease um, the brightness a little bit so we have something like this going on and now we're in the effects and preset, we want to search for a ripple effect um, because we, we also have some kind of ripples in the eyes. So I'm going to apply this effect and then just increase the ripple effect right here and increase like um, the width a little bit like so. And maybe play, well the height is actually already a little bit too much. And there we go, wave speed zero. And just make sure that everything is in order right here. Maybe a width of 25, well 30 and a height of 10. Okay, so now we have a few ripples. Uh, we can uncheck this again and change the blending mode to something like additive. And then press T on the keyboard and just lower the opacity until you're satisfied. So now we have a little bit more detail in there. As you can see, well actually uh, the opacity is a little bit too low. And there we go, maybe change it to a screen. It's a little bit better. A little extra detail. Press R on the keyboard and maybe rotate it even more. Uh, we can go back in here and maybe uh, change this to 10. Okay, cool. Now I want to click on this one, this one with the circle effect. I want to duplicate this layer, so edit duplicate. We're going to put this on top and solo this for now. I'm going to duplicate the circle effect right here. So click on the circle effect, edit duplicate. And we're going to lower the radius and just invert the circle. So now we have something like this. We can also uncheck the invert for now and we can unsolo this and maybe change it to like a multiply. So now we have like a darker edge right here. And now what we want to do is press S on the keyboard and just scale it up a little bit so we have some kind of darker out uh, like an outer edge right here uh, which looks pretty cool and duplicate it once more and then scale it down like all the way in the, in the, in the center and then just delete this circle effect right here and press T on the keyboard to lower it maybe a little bit. So now we're like building up a little bit of depth in here. So duplicate once more and scale it up here and check the invert back on and change it to a screen. And just building up with these effects is going to add a little bit of depth in there. Okay, pretty cool. And now we actually have our eye, so I'm going to close everything down. What we wanna do now is just create a new circle, so solid and uh, this is going to be our pupil. Click OK and double click on the circle right here on the ellipse tool this is going to make a circular mask just solo this for now 
and toggle the transparency grid so you're sure uh, that you see your pupil. Double click on it and just make it as small as you want to, something like this for now, just in solo it for now. And I'm going to press F on the keyboard and just feather it out by much. Then I'm going to search for the rough and edges effect and I'm going to apply this to our pupil effect. That's going to add something like this right here in the edge sharpness. Just bring this down until you have like a softer um, center right here. And you can increase the border uh, to make it a little bit more rough like so. And then we can, um, well, you can basically open up the mask settings and increase the expansion and feather as you like. Maybe press T on the keyboard and just lower it a little bit. And have something like this going on. Maybe increase the complexity a little bit more and click on the pupil, duplicate it once more. And we're going to change our border to something like 10 and the sharpness is okay. And maybe in a scale of 300 and there we have it. Press M twice on the keyboard and just make this one smaller. And also the feather, something like 30 or even a little bit more, but not too much and just make it smaller. So this is going to be our actual pupil. And we want it to blend in ever in everything. So that's why we're actually using this rough and edges and this is going to make it look a little bit cooler. Okay. So without the rough and edges and with looks a little bit more natural in my opinion. And there we have our eyes. So and this is basically what we need in here. So that's it. And now what I want to do is select my last layer and just scale this one up because I actually want my entire solid to be scaled up uh, also for the second one. And there we go. So this is going to be our eye. Maybe we want to click on your our pupils and just make them smaller as you desire. Okay, so this looks really, really cool. So fine tune everything as you like. And there I have my eye. So I'm going to stick to this. I have my eye completely made in here with the turbulent noise effect. Uh, so already you can see this is really, really cool. Go back to the original layer and now we're almost done. So I'm going to my project manager, import my eye comp right here. Make sure that you're at the end of your composition right here and just scale this eye comp until it kind of fits the pupil of your current eye. We can press T on the keyboard, change it to 50%, scale it to 25, put it into position and then parent it to the pupil effect right here. Bring back the opacity and now we'll see that it actually sticks to our eye. So that's already great. Then I'm going to create a new solid on top of that and we're going to use this as our mat. Click OK and I'm going to uncheck both of these right now and for the mat select it and go to the pen tool, zoom in here and just try to draw our mask around our eye. Okay. So we masked out our eye, maybe this one a little bit more in here. And there we have it. Press M on the keyboard and create a new keyframe by clicking on the stopwatch for the mask path and then go back a little. Also make sure that our mat is actually, um, yeah, parented to the pupil. And then just go back a little bit, click on here and just readjust uh, our mask. So maybe go to the center right here, readjust the mask. And there we go. And all the way till the beginning in the center of these keyframes. And this should almost be perfect. So you can take as much time as you want to make it as perfect as you want. Okay, there we go. And then open up the mask settings right here and maybe change the feather to something like 10. And now what we want to do is check on our eye comp and just change the track mat. If you don't see that toggle the switches right here and just change it to an alpha mat. Just make sure that the solid is on top of that layer. So the order is important. And now we have our eye right here. So pretty cool. Maybe um, feather it a little bit more, something like 20. Or actually 10 seems about right, but just increase the mask a little bit. 
Okay. Actually, 10 is a little bit much, so we're going to change it back to 5. Okay, so we have our eye in here, and it's already following along with our eye itself, so great. Now what we want to do is duplicate that mask um, solid layer, so duplicate it. Create a new solid layer. And we can pick like a very dark blue color right here. Click OK and rename it to Shadows. Put it below that mat and also change the track mat to alpha mat. Go to your ellipse tool and while that solid is selected, just make another eye on top of it, something like, like this. Okay, subtract our mask and press F on the keyboard and just feather it as much as you like. So now we're actually adding a little bit of uh, shadows in there. We can um, open up the mask for the mat that we just uh, duplicated. So double click on it and maybe expand it a little bit. So we have more shadows than we have eye and uh, feather it a little bit more. So play around with all the settings. And now we're adding in a little bit of depth in here by adding shadows, as you can see, uh, which looks pretty cool. And there we have that. Okay. We're going to create a new adjustment layer and we're going to put that on top of everything. Reflections. Reflections. Okay. Again, take your ellipse tool and make an ellipse like so. And also parent it to that pupil. And actually we should create a new track mat that actually tracks uh, somewhere around here. Uh, we could do that, but the pupil isn't moving that much, so that's why I'm using the pupil. Um, the best way to actually do this effect is to track something that isn't moving. Your pupils are moving separately from your eyes, so uh, try to track something like this or this part or this part, something that doesn't move and is in this area. But for this, it will work. Okay, so apply an effect curves uh, to that effect and increase the brightness a little bit. Go to the blue channel, increase the blues, red channel, decrease the reds uh, for the green maybe increase the green just a touch and then uh, press F on the keyboard and just feather it as much as you want. And there we go. Press T on the keyboard and lower it to something like 35. So now we have like a slight reflection um, on the inside here, uh, which actually costs like light uh, reflections to our nose and everything. So something like this. Okay. Now we want to actually recolor our eye. So we have our eye comp right here. What we want to do is go for effect curves as well right here and maybe add a little bit of contrast in there if you want to. Go to the blue channel, increase the blues. Well, actually the blue channel. I'm also going to my project manager and change the eight bits per channel. I'm going to change that to 32. Click OK and that's going to allow us to work with a little bit more colors and it's going to come in nicely if we're going to start adding glows so and that's for later. Go back to the eye comp effect controls and remove the, the red channel a little bit like so. And the greens we can increase them a little bit and for the contrast I'm going to add a little bit more contrast in there. Actually I'm going to open up this comp again and just try to um, play a little bit with the contrast in here. For this layer, for example. Okay. And now we're getting more details. So play around with all these settings. You're going to get different results. Then after everything, um, I'm going to apply an effect, tint effect right here. And just lower it to something like 25. So now it's not as saturated. Okay, duplicate your original footage. Now what you want to do is extract the reflections of our original eye and just put it on top of our new eye. So uh, here we have some highlights. So go to the effects and preset and search for Luma key. Apply that to your video footage and now just increase your threshold. And if you're going to solo this, like just this portion, that's what we want. We can also feather it a little bit like so and unsolo this again. And now we're going to change this to an additive or maybe a screen. So 
So as you can see, now we add a little bit of reflections in there and it's making it look a lot cooler. So you can add as much as you want. And feather as much as you want. And instantly that makes it look a lot more realistic. Okay, cool. So there we have our eye. We have something like this. And now if you want to fade the effect in on top of your original eye, something I also did is lower the opacity for our eye comp. So actually our original eye is still coming through a little bit, just a slight touch. And then apart from that, what you can do is um, click on the mat right here and go for a rough and edges effect. Apply this to the mat right here and increase the border as much as you need until you don't see the effect. Click on the stopwatch for the border, move a few frames forward and change it back to zero. And now you have a cool animation on the eye that's actually coming, uh, well, becoming visible. We can lower the sharpness right here and also um, alt click on the evolution maybe and type times times 150. That's going to animate our evolution just a little bit. And then for the scale, you can change it to 50 or whatever you want. And for the complexity, maybe to six. And now we have a cool transition of your eye that's actually becoming visible. We can uh, go to the beginning right here um, of our animation, click on our rough and edges, copy it, control C, click on the new mat for the shadow, also paste it over here. And then for the other effects, press T on the keyboard change it to zero, move forward and change it to one, well, to the original state. Okay, and let's preview. And now we have a cool fade in like so. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like. Also subscribe to the channel and definitely check out our website. We have a bunch to offer for filmmakers, uh, motion graphics artists, and well, a bunch of stuff like assets, templates. Definitely check it out. Links will be in the description and then I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.